3, 2, 1, launch. And everything seems to be up. So let's refresh this page. And oh yeah, it is there. YouTube has the most comprehensive control panel of all video hosting services. Yet, this comprehensiveness comes at a cost. There's a ridiculous number of metadata fields you are supposed to fill per video. It's not obligatory, but the more metadata that you provide to YouTube algorithm, the more discoverable your videos will be. And filling all those fields by hand is a huge pain, especially if you prepare the script of your videos using Word, as I do. I'm Quantic Dave, and today we will automate away this pain. Alright, we have our objective, so let's start by writing a simple design document. Even for a seemingly simple project like this, drafting a concise design document will help you immensely. If nothing, it will help you make a habit of always starting with a design document. I will talk about how to create a fully flagged design document in another video, but for now, let's get right to it. Alright, here is the outline of our design document. It is pretty simple and made up of six sections. First is the objective which we defined already. It's to upload my videos programmatically using the YouTube's API and using Node.js. Obviously, we're gonna parse the metadata from our Word documents. And what are our requirements for this? We're gonna read and parse the video metadata from a Word document, which is an XML file, essentially. And after that, we're gonna upload the 4K video, which is sometimes like 40, 50 gigabytes. And we're gonna set the, all the proper metadata and the thumbnail. And obviously I want to use JavaScript and Node.js because I want to get this done as fast as possible. But also Python is my secondary choice if Node.js doesn't turn out to be feasible. All right, then let's do the feasibility. Well, I checked developer documentation of YouTube's API and it seems to have a nice HTTP endpoint which supports video uploads, so we can use that. They also provide a Node.js client, which means I don't really have to deal with the HTTP request myself. I can just use that client and be done with it. And there are several libraries to parse Word documents, but I'm not going to use them. I want to keep this simple and I don't want to introduce another dependency. So what I will do is to just start a Word from the command line and just export a plain text file and parse that plain text file using Node.js file system module. What's our software design going to look like? Well, as I said, I want everything to be simple. So I will create simple modules per functionality. and I'm going to create tests for each of those files. And optionally, I want to use YARCs. Proof of concept. I did my research indicating that this is possible, but I still need to be 100% sure that this could be achieved in the exact same way that I'm planning to do it. But I don't have to do it. Somebody else did this for me. There's a lovely command line tool written in Python, and I've tested it and it works. So I don't have to separately prove that this is workable and the uploads work just fine. So we can proceed with our implementation plan. Again, I'm going to start with a simple npm init, which is going to create a simple scaffolding for our project. And I'm going to create my module layout. Then I'm going to implement every module and its test. And finally, I'm going to put all the modules together as a simple command line app. Once it's done, I'm going to document everything in a readme file. As I mentioned, I want to use Node.js for this project. I will slap a nice web UI in front of this project in the future. So having the backend and the front end the same language will make my life easier. My second choice was Python. Both JavaScript and Python are scripting languages, and both are prime candidates for any automated tasks. Since automation code changes much faster than regular software code, scripting languages are better choices for automation and other DevOps. All right, now we're gonna initialize our project using npm init. It has same defaults, so I'm just gonna use them. All right, then what I'm going to do is to install these three packages. Google Auth Library, Google APIs, and Mocha. Google APIs and the Auth Library are required to be able to do HTTP requests against YouTube API, and Mocha is our test framework. All right, our project is initialized, so let's open it in IntelliJ. I'm using IntelliJ for this demonstration because of its lovely presentation mode, but you can also use Visual Studio Code. That's going to work out perfectly fine too. All right, our main upload module, youtube.js, basically starts with a bunch of constants, which I copy pasted from the quick start guide of Google's Node.js client, which I'm gonna show in a moment, but let's dive into the code first. We start by defining the category IDs. 
These are the three categories that I use a lot and hard coded them here. And the rest is just a bunch of hard coded paths. I plan on cleaning these hard coded paths later on and move everything into a configuration file. But for now, I'm just going to keep everything as is. And obviously we need the upload scope, which again, I copy pasted from the quick start guide and I'm going to show in a moment. But let's explore our upload video function. It's going to take three arguments, the title, the description and the tags. In the future, I'm going to add more metadata fields, but for now, these three are enough. And as always, I'm going to validate my inputs, make sure that all the files are in place. And rest is again copy pasted from the quick start guide. It just reads the client secret JSON, which we're going to acquire in a moment. And it authorizes us towards Google, then calls our main upload function implementation. And where is that? Here it is. Now it takes four arguments, title, description, tags, plus authentication. We're going to use that authentication information to be able to make requests towards google.youtube.v3 API endpoint. All right. What do we do then? We call our YouTube service videos endpoint insert function. And we're going to pass the authentication and we're going to pass the hard coded snippet and status parts. This is again provided by the documentation. So I'm just copy pasting as is. And the important part is the request body. It has title, description, tags, all the metadata fields that we want in place. And it sets the default language to English. And obviously we want the status to be private. So we can manually verify all these fields before actually publishing it. And the most important field, the media part. This was the hard coded path to our video file. And we're going to open it as a stream and we're going to pass it to the body. So it won't have to read all of the video file into the memory. It can just read it in chunks as a stream and it can upload it in chunks again. And we're going to handle the response or the error, whichever we get. So let's investigate what we do with the response. If there's an error, we're just going to log it and fail. If there's a response, we're just going to log it and continue. This is the second important part. The API doesn't let you upload the video and the thumbnail at the same time. So we'll have to upload the thumbnail after the video. So we'll have to play along and call service thumbnails set. And again, we're going to pass the authentication. And this time we're going to pass the video ID because the endpoint needs to know which thumbnail to set for which video. And we're going to pass the thumbnail file as a stream to the media body. And again, we're going to handle the error from our second call again. And the rest is just a bunch of copy paste code from the quick start guide. I'm going to put all of this code into a GitHub gist. So you can just copy paste without having to redo all of these modifications. All you have to do is to create a Google API credential file and put it into your project directory. Let's see if everything works. And on the left, we have our video file, which we're going to upload in a moment and the thumbnail of it and our upload command. And here are my videos on my channel. Three, two, one, launch. Yep, I see a flicker there, which is our temporary text file. And everything seems to be up. The description is in place, the title is in place, the state is private and the thumbnail seems to have gone through too. So let's refresh this page. And oh yeah, it is there, it's processing. Since it's just a one minute video, it already processed 95% of it. So let's see if all the fields are in place. All right, title is tight, the description is tight, the thumbnail is in place, which is lovely. The playlist, I'm going to have to set it manually because I don't know which playlist to put this yet. I can automate this in the future. And the tags are in place and the video language is English, which is great. If you don't set the video language, it won't be able to create subtitles automatically for you. Yep, everything seems to be in place. And that is about it. There are still some more metadata fields that I would like to automate in the future, but this was the bulk of it. Next steps. I plan to expand this project to automate my other chores like Twitter posts, Instagram updates, compressing master video using FFmpeg for storage, and finally storing everything on a cheap cloud storage. As I make these improvements, I will post an update video demonstrating my entire workflow automation. I plan to stick with Node.js as it worked out really well for me. But if you convert my code to Python, ping me so I can post it in the video description. If you don't want to miss the update when it's out, don't forget to sub. 
By the way, I post most of my video guides as articles too. If you want to check them out, head over to quantigda.com. It's an open source website and its code is on GitHub. If you want to contribute to it, feel free to fork it on GitHub and make a pull request. And that is it for now. I will see you with the updates.